Welcome to Hope is Here. My name is Greg Horn, and uh, I want to talk to you today about the law of the mirror. The law of the mirror. Uh, recently just finished a book called The 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth uh, by John Maxwell. He's a former pastor and just a tremendous communicator. He's written a lot of books over the years that have really helped me. Um, all of his books are based on biblical principles. They're not churchy books. They're self-development church. Uh, they're leadership books that uh, you can use in churches, but you can use in business just in your everyday life. I recently uh, went through this book in six weeks with uh, a group of people and uh we did it early Tuesday mornings for six weeks and just really, really uh, blessed me going through this and just been sharing. I did one on the law of pain a couple of uh, weeks ago that I got a lot of good feedback from. And so uh, another law that I thought really, really spoke to me and can speak to you today is the law of the mirror. And it says you must see value in yourself to add value to yourself. In other words, if you're going to grow, okay, and as long as you're alive, I think God wants us to grow, friends, okay? and uh, But a lot of reason people don't grow is because they don't feel like they're worthy of growth because it may be a sin that they've uh, committed in their life that they've done or because something that's happened, the enemies just caused them to become hopeless because of a wound that somebody else has done. And uh, I'm not making light of that because I know some of you have suffered greatly because of selfish and unwise decisions that other people have made that have affected you. Or uh, what I have found a lot of times that it's kind of a combination of both. Uh, unwise, selfish decisions that others have made that impact me, but also unwise or selfish decisions that I've made. Uh, kind of a combination of both when I can get discouraged and hopeless and uh, maybe even have some anger. And I don't want to grow. I just kind of get stuck and kind of go through the motions in life and the same old, same old. And uh, the passage in the Bible that kind of reflects this is James chapter 1, uh, verses 22 through 25. It says, And remember, it is a message to obey, not just to listen to. If you don't obey, you're only fooling yourself. For if you just listen and don't obey, it's like looking at your face in a mirror but doing nothing to improve your appearance. You see yourself walk away and forget what you look like. But if you keep looking steadily into God's perfect law, the law that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you hear, then God will bless you for doing it. So maybe you uh, maybe you want to spend some time in James chapter 1, verses 22 through 25 uh, later today. Uh, just let God speak to you in that mirror part, looking in the mirror. What is it that about yourself that you're not remembering about what God's Word says about you? And that is first and foremost, most important. I'm going to share some things here that John Maxwell shares that can help us uh, learn to see value in ourselves. But the very first one, just so you know this, is uh, we have to know what God says about us and how He loves us. And the Bible tells us that we're made in the image of God, friends. And so please don't forget that today. And yet, uh, when life beats us up and we just have a lot of challenging seasons, we get so beat up and we just uh, start buying into the lies of the enemy. And so it all starts with knowing what God says about you and spending time with him each day and maybe starting there in James chapter 1, verses 22 through 25. But I think a lot of people look back and have regrets in their life. And I'm hoping, uh, you know, it's uh, old saying goes, it's it's never too late, uh, you know, to make a, a new ending. You know, you can have a fresh start today. You may not change, uh, you know, what's happened in the past. You can't, right? But you know what? You can start today and have a brand new ending in your life. You say, yeah, I can't make a brand new beginning. Well, you know, you can today, actually. You can say, you know what, today I'm going to do this differently. And I'm going to have a brand new ending, ending in my life. And, uh, you know, friends, it, it's not how you start the race. It's how you finish it, right? Okay? You know, and, uh, man, we all have detours and sidetracks, get sidetracked in life. And yet God's like, hey, I want to get you get right back on the path that I have for your one and only life. But I think that first starts with looking in the mirror at ourselves and what in our lives honor God and what uh, doesn't honor God. But I think so many times when life's beating us up, we just kind of get sidetracked. And a lot of times we just get stuck and we kind of get, uh, we, we just get, want to quit. And we don't want to move forward or grow. 
And uh, John Maxwell shares a powerful story about a lady named Janetta McSwain in his book. She was born to a single mother who didn't want her, and she actually reminded Janetta that quite often. And uh, she and her sister Sonia, who was a year older, uh, along with a cousin, spent the first five or six years of their lives being raised by their grandmother in Birmingham, Alabama. But the house was also shared by three uncles who abused all three of the children psychologically, physically, and sexually. So as you can imagine, Janetta was scarred both physically and emotionally. She says, by the time I was five years old, I'd already started to believe that not only was I inferior, but I was also a child abandoned by her own mama. As a child, I had no place, no voice, and no worth at all. Maybe that's where you're at today. I hope you'll keep listening because this story has a powerful ending. So when Janetta and and Sonia's mother learned about the abuse, she did move the three girls to a new home, thankfully. But the abuse continued, this time from the men her mother brought in the home. Sonia ultimately responded by living on the streets and turning to crack cocaine. Janetta avoided uh, the drugs, but she spent much of her time on the streets and dropped out of high school in 11th grade. She had her first child out of wedlock at age 19, then a second child in her mid-20s. For the most part, she lived in a government-supported housing and on government assistance and relied on her boyfriends for additional support. To keep herself in designer clothes, she started resorting to shoplifting. So Sonia's perspective perspective, uh, poignantly sums up the state that they were in. She said, everybody in my family had been in jail, on drugs. I didn't finish high school. So what have I got to live for? What have I got to amount to? Nothing. What have I got to accomplish? Nothing, she said. But on Janetta's 30th birthday, it caused her to look in the mirror. She didn't like what she saw. Janetta wrote, you know, that day I woke up and I realized I had absolutely nothing to celebrate, no money, No full-time job, no home, no husband, and no clue, and not even the will to do any better with my life. At last, I knew it was time to make some changes. And maybe that's where you're at today. You're like, man, I need to make a change. So Janetta realized if uh, she kept continuing the same direction she was going, her two sons would also be headed for trouble. So as far as she knew, not a single male member of her family had ever finished high school. Many died young or they even ended up in jail. And she didn't want that for her boys. So Janetta, the process started with her working to get her GED. She took a 12-hour course to prepare and then took the test. She needed a score of 45 to pass. But she received a 44.5. But instead of giving up, Janetta was determined to make something of herself So she rescheduled to retake it at the first opportunity. This time she passed, and she was so excited to be chosen to speak at the graduation ceremony, yet no one from her family bothered to even attend. Friends, I want you to think about that for a second. You know, first time she tried to get her GED, she missed by half a point. A lot of us would just say, you know what? I quit, man. I tried, and I come that close. Come on, God, give me a break. Yet I love, Janetta said, nope, I'm going to look in the mirror. I'm going to try again, and I'm going to try quickly. Because the longer that we wait sometimes, friends, after we have a failure, the more, more likely it is that we won't attempt something again. But she took it, scheduled it again as soon as it was available, and then she passed. And the teachers were so proud of her and all that, they asked her to speak at the graduation ceremony. But then more rejection No one from her family even bothered to attend. And maybe that's where you're at today. You're like, you know what, man? I don't feel like anybody's supporting me. Well, friends, God understands. And Jeanette understands. That's why I'm sharing this long story today because I just feel like somebody needs to hear it. When I read this book, it really spoke to me. Jeanette knew she was going to change. She needed to leave Birmingham, Alabama and get a fresh start. And she wanted to do something that no one in her family had ever done. She wanted to go to college. Now you got to understand, she's like 31 by this time. So she decided to move to Atlanta, Georgia, and was motivated by a profound thought. I get a chance to be anyone I want to be. you got to remember, she's a single mom with two, uh, two young boys. Okay, 
But she still said, you know what? I get a chance to be anyone I want to be. And I want you to know, friends, that you have that too. So it took her almost three years to pull it off, but she finally made the move. Afterwards, she enrolled in Kennesaw State University, deciding to take more than a full load every semester. She was 33 years old when she started school. She was street smart, but unfortunately wasn't really book smart, at least not at first. That intimidated her in the beginning, but for the first time in her life, Janetta was determined to better herself, and soon she realized she could do it. I realized I didn't have to be smart, Janetta said. I just had to be determined, motivated, and focused. I want to say that one more time. She said, I had to be determined, motivated, and focused. And she said, this came with a high price tag for me. I had to exchange my thinking. I had to think like a smart person. Not only did she study hard and stay focused, but she also sought out the smartest person in each of her classes and asked to study with them. Soon she was studying and thinking like the blessed students in her class. She also maintained the vision she had for her future. At the beginning of every semester, she went to the bookstore on campus and tried on a cap and gown, looking at herself in the mirror and imagining what it would be like to graduate. Once again, that looking in the mirror. You know, the Bible says, without vision, we shall perish. She had that vision. I'm going to graduate from high school. And so even though she still had a ways to go, she would go each semester at the beginning, all eight semesters, and look what it was like with her and her graduation cap and gown. So I want to encourage you today. For somebody listening, you're like, I need to do that. One day when a classmate was talking to her, she had a realization. The classmate was saying, I don't love myself. I'm a nobody. Janetta responded, you can sure love you if... I love me. And that's when it hit her. Maybe for the first time, I realized I love myself. She had changed. She was turning into a person she wanted to be, that she was created to be. Janetta completed the work for the bachelor's degree in three years. Then she enrolled in graduate school where she earned a master's degree in social work. And currently she is working towards earning her doctorate. I went for something that society and the people around me told me you can't do. But Janetta said, yes, I can. And friends, God is saying to you today, yes, you can. And so her example is just a powerful example of what can happen in a person's life when they recognize their value and they begin to add value to themselves. And was motivated by her desire to help her children, and she began to add value to herself first, and then later she saw value in herself. It doesn't matter which occurs first, okay? Okay. One feeds the other. What matters is the cycle of seeing yourself as God sees you and that you're valuable and you're made in the image of God. And if you don't realize that you have genuine value and that you are worth investing in, then you'll never put in the time and effort needed to grow your potential. So make sure that you realize that your self-esteem is the single most important key to a person's behavior. And that's what I talked about yesterday on Hope is Here, that Romans chapter 8, 1 says, for those of us in Christ Jesus, there is no condemnation. And the enemy does that, and man, it affects our self-esteem. Zig Ziglar says, it's impossible to consistently behave in a manner inconsistent with how we see ourselves. So I want to encourage you uh, to, man, take a look in the mirror and see, do you see yourself as God sees you or of your failures and your disappointments? Unfortunately, we're out of time, but I hope you're going to join in tomorrow because I'm going to share with you some steps to help you build your self-image and to see yourself as God sees you. I'm Greg Horn, and this is Hope is Here.